Finally, today I'm going to talk about a special type of Markov chains, which we call the birth death type Markov chains. And um, consider this discrete time Markov chain where the transition from state i to i plus one is non-zero. And this transition from i to i minus one is again non-zero. And you can also stay from, stay at i, but apart from this, p sub ij is zero whenever the difference between i and j is greater than one. So for instance, from state one, you do not jump to three, you do not jump to four. You can only go to two or you can stay at one. At state two, you can go back to one, you can go up to three or you can stay at two. You cannot jump to four or five, etc. So this is why we call it birth death. It's like this is a population and um, every transition corresponds to either a birth, which gives you a plus one transition or a death, which corresponds to a minus one transition. Okay. You cannot have multiple births and multiple deaths at the same instant. You cannot go from four to six. You cannot go from four to one, only to either three or five or maybe four itself. Okay, so these we call birthday type Markov chains and these appear a lot in, in, in a wide variety of situations. And uh, these are quite useful because the solution to these have nice forms because the balance equations um, have uh, more simple forms than usual. And a key observation here obviously is uh, birthday type Markov chains are irreducible and aperiodic because, well, since you have loops that eliminates periodicity, and of course you can reach every state from every state. That means this is an irreducible chain. And if you want to solve such a chain, a birthday type chain, if you write the global balance equations, for instance, for the first state, j equals one, well, we will disregard the loop, but the flux, the probability flux out of one is just this, p12 multiplied by pi one, that should be equal to the flux incoming. So usually we denote it like this, the flux outgoing, the flux incoming. Okay. And that's pi two times P two one. Okay. And uh, so do that also for two. This is state two. Now let me clear these ones. Okay. So the flux incoming is from one and from three, and that is pi one times P one two, this, and pi three times P three two, this. That is the incoming probability flux. And this should be equal to the outgoing. Let me indicate this with red. And that is this one and this one. Okay, so that is pi two times P two three and P two one. Now you see here from uh, the first global balance equation, we have established that pi one two uh, times P one two, this equals pi two P two one. So this term here is equal to this term here. So these disappear. What remains is pi two P two three and pi three P three two. The same goes for this. If you do the same, you will see the same behavior. So in general, the balance equations um, uh, simplify to this form for any J uh, pi J times P J J plus one equals pi J plus one times P J plus one J. So this is like, you can just look at two consecutive states. So this is J, this is J plus one. The probability of being here in this state times this probability should be equal to the probability that the Markov chain is in this state, pi J plus one times this transition probability. As you see, the global balance equations become simpler, which we call detailed balance equations, okay? So detailed balance equations hold 
in case you have a birthday type Markov chain, which are usually easier to solve. And hence, we use birthday type chains a lot in um, a lot of uh, modeling scenarios. Okay, so finally, if, if those didn't make sense to you, if you have still doubts, because uh, Markov chains is uh, a little bit different from what we have discussed so far. We, as you see, we didn't talk about any autocorrelation, any stationarity, maybe except for ergodicity. Uh, we didn't talk about uh, distributions a lot. We, we just talked about transition probabilities mainly. If, if that didn't sit well, and uh, maybe you can consult this video, which I provided the link here, uh, both in text form or as a QR code, prepared by um, HarvardX, which is the education platform of Harvard University. And this, well, it, it's over a very simple scenario. It describes what we use uh, Markov chains for. And I recommend you to watch this it's quite a short video. And uh, it's sort of a, a overall summary of what I have described so far. And when you watch it, I advise you to try to write the transition probability matrix, which is not given in the video. But the stationary distribution is given. And from this, uh, I would advise you to try to solve the steady state distribution from the matrix P yourself. OK? That's all for Markov chains. It's at least that's all for discrete time Markov chains. And we will continue with continuous time Markov chains in, in the next class.